Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles, and today I want to show you how to identify echinacea. This is a really common medicinal plant, and a lot of people use this plant for colds and flus and immune disorders. However, you do have to be careful whenever you go to use it. But before you go to use this plant, it's important to know how to identify it so that way you don't gather the wrong plant. So let's look a little bit closer at some of the distinct features of this plant. Whenever we look very closely at the flower of Echinacea, we're going to notice this slightly cone shape. Now these flowers are going to be varying in shape from cone all the way to flat. The rays of all of these flower petals are going to vary in shape. However, it's going to have this very distinct pink and purple coloration to it, and sometimes they can be white. And this plant does hybridize very easily with other members of the Echinacea family. The scientific name of this plant is Echinacea purpurea. This plant is, like I said before, very common for use in colds and flus and to boost the immune system. And if we look closely, we're also going to notice these very orange tipped spikes in the inside of the flower. These are actually going to be turning into the seeds of echinacea. So we wanna make sure that we look at this plant and see a cone shape to the flower petals. The flower petals have this distinct purplish magenta kind of pink color to them and the tips inside are spiked and they are orange at the tips. Whenever we look at the leaves of Echinacea, we're going to notice that they are very long. This one is probably about three to four inches long and it's going to come to a very, very fine point once we get towards the tip. Right now it is really hot and has been really dry the past several days. So these leaves are folding up and they're doing that simply so they can serve moisture. But whenever we flatten these leaves out, we're going to notice that there are a lot of sharp teeth and lobes running down the margins or the side of this leaf. If we look at the underside of the leaves of Echinacea, we're going to notice they're much wider than the top of the leaf. And this is a good way to help discern the leaves of Echinacea from other plants, not simply because the top is green and the underside is white, but if we combine these features together with those identification features of the flower, we're going to get a really good complete profile of this plant. If we look closely at these margins, we can see this lobe right here by the tip of my thumb, and we can also see these teeth running along the margins. Whoops, let's get rid of that. Sorry, piece of grass. Whenever we look very closely at the sides or the margins of these leaves, we're going to notice this lobe right here with teeth running alongside of it. So the leaves are going to be long, they're going to be sort of lance shaped, the margins are going to have lobes, and they're going to have teeth. These teeth are very distinct right now when I hold the leaf like this. These leaves are going to have a very distinct papery feel. They're going to feel like very, very rough construction paper, and they're covered in all kinds of little bristles and little hairs running along the leaf. Now the stem of this plant is also very, very bristly and very stiff. So let's take a look at the stem and see some of the discerning features of this plant's stem. Now the stem of Echinacea doesn't have too many discerning features about it. It is round, it is very stiff, it feels sort of woody in the hands. However, you guys might be able to see all these little bitty bristles. And these are the little bristles that exist on the leaves, but also on the stem of Echinacea. And it's gonna feel very rough up against your skin. It's gonna feel kind of like sandpaper as you rub these stems and the leaves of this plant up against your fingers. And this is one of the good ways to, det to determine whether or not you have Echinacea or just a different plant. To my knowledge, there's no plant that looks similar to Echinacea. So there's not any toxic lookalikes, which is a really good thing if you're wanting to use this plant for medicine. As we get down towards the ground near the base of the plant, we're going to notice a lot of different stems coming out of the ground. And I usually will only notice one to two stems coming from a plant, coming from any one plant root. However, most likely it's usually one stem per tap root. This plant has a tap root and its tap root is what you're going to be using for medicine. The root of this plant should be dug in the fall like all other roots. You don't want to dig this plant up before the fall hits simply because the medical constituents in the root are not as potent as they will be in the fall. This plant was very widely used by Native Americans all over the United States and it's still used 
heavily in Europe today, and in America, we're starting to use this plant more and more for colds and flus. There are some things to keep in mind if you plan on using this plant for medicine, though, for your colds and flus. So let's talk about that for just a little bit. This plant is good for immune disorders, however, not autoimmune disorders. If you have a compromised immune system, it's probably a good idea to stay away from using this plant for a cold and flu. The reason for that is this plant has been found to increase tumor size on people with autoimmune disorders. It's also been found to compromise their immune system. And if you're using this plant for a cold or a normal flu, if you use it for more than two to four weeks, you're going to actually weaken your immune system instead of boosting it. So you need to be very careful when using this plant for medicine. The root is what you're going to use for this plant and you're going to dig it up in the fall. If you dig it up right now in this stage in the middle of summer, the root's not going to be as effective. It still will work, but not near as fast and not near as efficiently as it would if you dug it up in the fall. So if you're going to dig it up in the fall, what considers the fall? Basically, you want to dig this plant's root after the very first frost has happened. What happens in plant roots after the frost hits, the very first frost, is the plant will send all of its energy down from the rest of the plant all the way through the stem down into the root. And that's when we want it for gathering medicine. You guys can see all of these very beautiful cone flowers growing here, and we can also see some of the different shapes that they're going to have. These plants aren't going to always be in a cone shape like the name might imply. You can see this one right here, for example, has a cone shape, whereas this one right here is just a little bit flatter. And if we look all the way around, we're going to notice all of these different shapes from flat to cone shaped on this plant. And we're also going to notice this very distinct spikes coming out of the center with these orange tips. These tips are kind of sharp. They won't hurt you, but they are sharp and they are pokey. They feel sort of like Velcro in the hand. So let's talk about the environment that Echinacea likes to grow in. As you guys can see right now, I'm in this huge field and there's a lot of areas in my part of the country that are trying to restore the long grass prairie. So you wanna find a prairie environment if you're looking for Echinacea. All of the Echinacea species that I know of grow in plains and prairie type habitats or even in old fields. Echinacea, the plant that we see in the center, is also very commonly grown in people's yards because people just love the look of these beautiful flowers. So that's how you guys can identify Echinacea purpurea. But I hope all of you guys enjoyed this video. I thank all of you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one. Remember, if you wanna learn more about wild edibles or medicinal plants, please make sure to subscribe.